Hey guys, what's going on Insightful here and on today's Web3 First Look, we're going to be looking at Block Lords, which is a Web3 strategy game backed by people such as Square Enix, Delphi Ventures, Bitcraft, Animoca Brands, Immutable, and Polygon. They had a free NFT here and we're going to be looking at some early gameplay. In this video, we're going to kind of be looking at the art, what's going to happen in the future of the game and the different features of the game and how you can get involved and join in on the early access beta, which actually ends June 10th, so a, couple, a week and a bit from now. Seems to be a lot of in-depth features such as like real-time battles, a genealogy system, um, being able to raid in real time, and basically, yeah, a real-time strategy game kind of similar to Total War, I think would be the, the best Web 2 comparison. So here we're kind of picking our first initial area that we're going to start in, and it gives you an idea of the different resources and the leader of that area. So pick the big area with Brutalis, set all our farm there. So our first task here is to select our villagers here and get them to pick up our wood. All right, so we did that first basic task. How to progress, basically, work your way up to use might to upgrade your status to unlock more features for your farm. Unlock powers and gain buffs for more events. And so basically our next task is to upgrade to the first star here. And it seems like it uh, costs us 10 might, which is what the symbol is here. We'll upgrade there. And that is our second task. And just a quick overview of how it works. So you click on them and then you click on the area and then you click on the the zone they can work on basically right next task is to use some builders to make a lumber mill so we went on the left side here we recruited another squad we picked our builders and then we're gonna build a lumber mill and it's like similar to kind of age empires where you can go and deposit wood at the lumber mills and it basically helps you collect wood more quickly so you had to pick a specific location for the lumber dark spot which i was uh, having a bit of trouble to find it's not like a wide area like the like the gatherers over there so now we can hire lumberjacks because of that, which we're going to do now. All right, so now we have our builders building a stone mine for the next resource, and then the lumberjacks are working. I just have to select them and pick an area to work on. And then you can actually assign heroes to specific squads, and that gives them various bonuses as well. Um, the heroes were free mints, and you can buy them really cheap off the marketplace as well. All right, so we have the miners. They brought the stone all the way back here because we don't have a mining spot over here. Um, and now we need our builders to build a wheat field, but they have zero energy left, so we need to spend food, recover the energy. So we'll send them back, they'll recover, and then we'll have them build the next wheat field so that more food can get made. All right, so now we've hired farmers to work in the wheat field, and then you actually can determine kind of the different productions and styles of seeds you want to use. So let's try advanced. Let's try like... Try like mid tier for everything. So after a little bit, our farmers made the wheat field, but that cost a lot of our tools resources. So we needed our builders to make a forge. And now we can send the builders to the forge to make more tools. And now they're making the tools. It cost down in wood to do that. So we just went to the marketplace to sell our extra tools to get some gold. Like if you need to sell extra resources that you might not need and you need gold. Um, you actually use this bottom uh, tab here to get into that menu. Suggestion for the team for the tutorial. Uh, there was no indication to go down here to find that. So just a note for them there. Uh, and yeah, so the next thing is we're gonna need to build a windmill. So we can turn the wheat into flour. Another thing I would suggest for the team is so when we build this house, it's probably going to unlock our recruitment slot. There is a choke point of the builders, like having to wait for them to rest and do other things and get energy to be able to progress through kind of this tutorial stage. So I would suggest either give five, six slots by default. So you could have two builders doing something or make the player create the house earlier on in the tutorial. So that slot's unlocked. Obviously in the game this will be different because like having the whole point of being good at the game is kind of optimizing all of the efficiency between the workers and the resources so there, that there isn't downtime but like in a tutorial situation like this uh, it's not really necessary or ideal. So we made a cook, we got our windmill and our greenery, we needed more resources in both stonewood and tools, and we're trying to keep the, the food supply up as well, because every time you rest it consumes food. And then you can basically use the cook to kind of get like level 2 kind of resources where you convert the green into better types of food. Alright, so I've been playing for about 20 to 30 minutes now trying to get this next quest here, which is building the Hunter's Lodge, and it costs 420 wood and about, you know, 350 stone. 
Now we have hunters that can go into the forest and get food for us. But playing so far, I would say a major choke point in the game right now is definitely the food supply. So it's extremely restrictive and limiting to kind of getting a lot of things done because like even for the farmers, for example, you have to you have to pay food to get them to plant, to get them to harvest, and then you gotta pay a cook. It just takes too much food to do anything. Like you need food to for the cook to take the farmer resources to turn that into food. Then you need food to the tools to be able to build anything and then you need food to rest so like it's a massive choke point for everything and like i've been trying to do everything to like optimize and maximize food like getting them the spare villagers to get food or prioritizing like building food stuff and i was still finding myself being very restricted in trying to get more food and waiting thank god there's a marketplace on the bottom right here so you'd actually buy some of the stuff but like that's only limited to the amount of gold you have right so i would say it needs to take way less food to probably uh do the resting for the energy i would say instead of it being like 20 food make it like i don't know 10 or 5 or something I, they've probably done a lot of testing and balancing on that but there was and i just got a bunch of food now because of the hunters but now they have the rest which is going to cost 20 food per five energy right so if it was i guess if it's going to cost 20 food make it restore all of the energy not just five energy right like if i want my miners to be full it's going to cost 80 food right just to get the miners going again right so i want to make more food now and get the cook going i gotta make her rest again just to do that right and if i want her to use stuff i gotta get to the farmer so i was basically spending like half an hour trying to like you know shimmy boat all of the people into just barely having enough food to get the stuff done to eventually have enough resources just to build this hunter's hut which isn't even that big or expensive or advanced of a building right like we're still in the tutorial here and for example here now we have to build a cow's pen okay we don't have enough stamina once again so we gotta go back and go and rest 20 food for five stamina wait for that and then we'll, we'll see what happens in the end of that so yeah exactly so it's gonna be 800 brick 840 wood just to build the cow pen right and then when we build the cow pen it's probably gonna want us to you know get the milk and then use a bakery to make that so yeah i mean i think i'm gonna end it here because i just don't want to be waiting forever just to try and get more food <laughs> and like slowly tweaking my way up there like it took like 20 30 minutes just to get the hunting lodge here but Overall, I would say, you know, it's a pretty solid, fun game if you like the resource management perspective. I like how all of the units are in the left here, so I can just click, you know, and their actions are down here, and I can get them to do stuff. If you're very familiar with uh, Age of Empires, you know, this game will make a lot of sense to you. A lot of resource management, a lot of interplay between the different resource gathering. Like, you need one resource to be able to fuel the other person to do the next thing, and so on and so forth. So I would recommend that. And then there is also like the whole world map and block lords and, you know, controlling different regions. And this map is absolutely massive, which is great to see, right? You can see there's probably 20, 30, 40 regions here total. So that's cool, right? So there's a whole other mechanics for that as well. But like at this point, it's like so painful to get past the tutorial and I don't want to spend another 20 to 30 minutes trying to just build the next building um so yeah either there needs to be more food created from the food production stuff or it needs to take less food to get energy back when people do stuff so you can continuously kind of like push through the process there or just get more food in general as a resource or maybe be able to sell rain in the marketplace here for food right instead of just gold right because then i have to buy the gold and then go to the shop to buy the food and you don't get that much food and then you're you know you're capped at the end right i'm only getting 20 food which is five energy for 10 gold and i can only that's a quarter of what i can buy in the marketplace so anyway we're gonna end it there i think it was a good little demo of the game i think for you know a free to play entry game it's pretty solid considering the mint was free but if you want to check them out uh they're over on twitter at blocklords all caps and you can check out their website for more information they have a really cool kind of trailer here and I do really think the gameplay loop is solid. The art style is pretty solid. And I'm excited to see what the future of this game holds. Check them out because the open beta ends June 10th now. And you can join the Discord and the community. Check out their Discord to get access to the early beta. And I hope you found this early Web3 for Silk and Stifle. I'll see you guys in the next one.